is Shai Schmelzer, I'm part of the Oracle Visual Builder team and in this demonstration we're going to talk about business object groovy functions and how you can use them from the UI in Visual Builder. We're going to build a bonus allocation application. We have two business objects, one for department and one for employees. Those two are related to each other, so in employees there's a pointer to the department. So department is kind of the parent and employees is the children. So in this page, we're going to create two variables. Um, one of them is going to be the current department that we're working on. And the other one is going to be the bonus that we're going to give to the employees in that department. Okay. So we're creating two numeric uh, variables, adding them to our page. Now we can start to design our UI. What we want to have at the top is a drop-down list of the departments. So we're going to use a select one choice and we're going to use the quick start to bind it to the data that is coming from the department business object. We are going to show you the name of the department, but we're going to track the ID of the department as the value. So this is how we define the options that would show up there. The next thing that we need to do is actually say that this field stores its data in this variable that we created a minute ago. Okay, so we'll change the title here like that and then in the data map this field to store the data in the current department variable. Nice, so the next thing we want to have is a list of all the employees working in that department. So again, we're dropping a table, hooking it up to the employees object. We're just interested in the name and the salary here. And since we want to filter to show only the employees in a specific department, we're going to use this part of the quick start um, dialog to define a filter criterion where we're going to filter the department attribute. We're going to make sure that it's equal, so $EQ, to the value that we have in the current department variable, like that. So if everything goes according to plan, right now we can see all the employees because we didn't select a department, but once we move over to live mode and select a specific department, we can see the employees in that specific department showing up. So this is a basic parent, child, or master detail format for the page. Next, we're going to add another field to our page where we're going to specify a bonus that we want to give to every employee in a specific department. So again, hooking it up to our bonus variable, the page variable. We can resize it a little bit. And let's add here a button that would actually allow us to call and give the raise, okay, so or give the bonus. Uh, we can make it uh, to be an icon, so not just text, maybe instead of text, we want to have an icon um, for this button. And we can customize the icon from the list of icons that come pre-populated with Visual Builder. And of course, you can add your own icons, but we'll just check this check mark over here. Looks good. All right, so now that we have the button in place, what we want to do next is create a business logic that actually goes over all the employees in a specific department and update their salary with a bonus. To do that, we're going to go to the department business object and we're going to define an object function. So let's click here and define a, an object function that will give the bonus. Now, when we go in initially, um, we can define parameters for this function. So let's go here and add a new parameter and give it a name, bonus, and the type, okay? We're also going to mark this function to be something that we can call from external uh, services or external applications. Now we're missing one thing here is that we don't currently see access to the employees from this function. Um, there is a relationship between the two, but the relationship right now only allows us from the uh, uh, employees to look at the departments. Since we want to make this a bidirectional relationship, we're going to go to the diagram, double click the relationship and define over here a name so employee, which will create an accessor for us that allows us from the department to access the employees. So now if we're back in the department object, you can now see the relationship to employees being shown here. And we can also see some code templates that we can bring into our code. For example, this one allows us to go and query based on some condition. OK, 
okay, and then loop over the records. If you just want to loop over all the records, you can pick up this little template, and then you just need to change it a little bit to do whatever you want. Okay, so right now we're going over all the um, children's, basically, of the department, and we're going to add one line that updates their salary field, okay, to be uh, the current salary plus the bonus. So the code here is done in Groovy. As you can see, we have a code template that helps you create this, so you don't need to mess around and find out how to do this. It's very easy. And now that we have this in place, the next thing that we need to do is hook this up to our UI. Okay. So this function is now exposed as a REST endpoint on our department object. Okay, just like the REST endpoint that gets us record, now we have another POST type of endpoint that allows us to update and invoke that specific function. So in our UI, we're going to define an action chain that connects to the button. And in this action chain, we're going to call the REST endpoint to execute this business object function. So again, under department, we can see the endpoint and select it. We need to invoke it on a specific department. So let's map this department over, and that would be our current department. The current department variable from the page would indicate which department we're working on. We need to provide an input to this method. Okay. So to do that, we're going back to our page, and we're going to define a type based on the um, parameters that this post method accepts. Okay. So define a type from an endpoint, and we can change the name if you want to. Now that we have the type, the next thing is let's define a variable based on that type. And this way, we can create very easily a variable that has the structure of parameters that we need to provide it. In this case, it's very easy. It's one parameter. But if you have more parameters, that's the way that uh, you can define it. And now we're going to pass this new variable that we created as the body for this REST endpoint. Now we need to set values in there. So let's first do an assign variable before we call the rest. And we can look at the type that we, or the variable that we need to set. And we just need to set the bonus over there. Okay, so we pick it up from the field in the page, pass it over to this variable, and then call the rest service. After we call the rest service, the data in the business object is going to be refreshed. So we want to refresh it also on the page. So we pick up a data provider event and uh, basically indicate that we need to refresh the data provider. And now we can run our page. So initially, again, we see all the employees. Then we can filter by department. And then we can give a specific raise to all the employees in their department. Let's give them a $100 raise. Click on the button, invoke the REST service. In one go, we update all the records and get the updated value into the page. Similarly, we can switch to another department, give another uh, bonus over there, and a click of a button basically goes back to the server, updates the, all the employees for their department, and shows us the result.